Hello, thank you for watching. I'm John Windsor Cunningham. How to get into a drama school. This video isn't for you if you're not serious about a drama school. But if you want to make acting your career and you want to get into a drama school or a big acting course, here are two things that will make it much easier for you to get in. The situation is something like this. Thousands of people apply to some of these courses, but if 3,000 apply to get 25 places in some big school, it's not 3,000, because half a male and half a female, so it's really 1,500 that are competing with each other, and at the audition, half of those look as though they wish they weren't there. They look as though they just don't feel ready, and that cuts the number to half of those that the school is seriously considering to 750, and at the audition, half of those have chosen monologues that don't suit them. And if they've got monologues that don't suit them, they can't make sense of the lines. And they might be wonderful doing different monologues, but they've just chosen monologues that don't suit them. And that cuts the number to 375. And half of those just blow it. It could be anything. They might just have no answer, no answer at all, for the simple questions that you can guess they'll ask at the interviews, like, why do you want to be an actor? Any short, simple answer will do fine, even because I love everything about it, if you say it sincerely. But so many have literally no answer at all. Or answers like, I just want to give it a try, and they don't sound really interested, and that cuts the number down to less than 200. And now we come to the first of the two things that will make it so much easier to get in, which is to like the school before you get into it. Because if you know that you're going to learn what you need. If you know it's going to teach you acting for camera or acting for stage or mainly Shakespeare or musicals or some special acting method that you want to study, if you know that you're going to learn what you want for your career, well, you'll probably find yourself working on your monologues harder. But what really counts is that at the audition, they'll know. They'll look at you and they'll know. They'll feel that you want to go to their school so they'll like you and of course they'll want to give you a place in it. So how do you find out about the school before you get into it? Well, here are four ways you could do that. Well, you don't decide on a drama school or a college course because some website says that famous actors went there. Because if those actors went to some terrible school, they might have been just as successful and the teachers have probably changed since then several times, and I can't tell you which I think is best, because teachers change every few years, but you can go on their websites, and this is legal. You can make a list of their teachers and see if they've got their own websites, and Google them and find out what work they did before they were teachers, and what directing they've done, and what acting they've done, and if that work interests you, if you get the feel that you like them, it may be worth a visit to the place. They may offer tours of it. And if not, at least go online and see if the building has got its own theatre or film studio. It may have two of both. It may have neither. Or go on any social media and find people who've actually been to the school that you're thinking of and see what they're like. See if they're impressive. See if they're fun if you could imagine enjoying going to a class with them, or not. And just get a feel of the place. Maybe they'll talk to you about the place. I'll actually send a letter or an email to the school, just a short, polite one, saying, I want to come to your school. Please, can you give me a little more information than is on your website about how much you concentrate on and name what you're really interested in, whether it's acting for camera or stage or musicals or Shakespeare or that you want to know if they have a special showcase for agents at the end of the course or if it's got a gymnasium because you're keen to keep fit and if it hasn't, map quest to see if there's a gymnasium nearby and how much that costs and just get to the point where you know that you've got places to apply to that you like. And then that leads to the second thing that will make it much easier to get into, which is that now that you like the school, before you even get into it, that you have to like the audition. 
before you do it, and this is how you do that. I can tell you a thousand things about monologues, but, well, that they should never last longer than 90 seconds, whatever they say, and that if it's from Shakespeare and there are two lines in it you don't understand, just cut the lines out, as long as it still makes sense. But what matters is that you like the monologue, so that you like the audition. In the play Measure for Measure, Isabella is threatened with rape, and you may like that she can seem strong-minded, or like to play her horrified and furious, most of her lines can be played either way, as long as you play it realistically. If your monologue is part of a horrible argument, you may like that you can laugh during some of it. If it's about depression, you may like finding one line in it that shows a spark of hope. You may like Romeo's love for Juliet, or you may like the fact that he's actually rather confused most of the time. You may like playing violent criminals, like Macbeth because you like the fact that he still loves his wife. What matters is because you like the monologue, when you like doing the audition, a golden thing happens. Because if you like the school and you like the audition, how can they turn you down? But there's a third thing, and I'm afraid it's something that may make you dislike me, but there we are. Yes, it's true, I think, that if a school feels that you like them, and you like something about your audition, then I think they're going to like you. But I did start this off by saying that this video was only for people who are serious, and there's something I'm going to say that will discourage some of you. The actors' unions in the United States have 200,000 members, and 10% of them earn a living. 10% of them earn nothing at all, and a large number survive by working in bars and cleaning floors and heaven knows what. But an acting life is still involved, doing perhaps two lines on a film every six months, and maybe a commercial every five years, maybe an online television series. And if you're interested in theatre, there's off-Broadway, off-off-Broadway, London Fringe Regional Theatre playing wonderful parts and developing as an actor because of it and having an exciting time and making wonderful friends but it's a nightmare financially. Now some learn to do some other job part-time. Some special kind of part-time job that they can pick up and leave on audition whenever they want and go back to very easily whenever they want it to earn some extra cash and some study for a degree in something else completely so that their future will feel more secure. So if you think it's more sensible not to rely completely on acting, to have two different careers, to be slightly less serious about it, well, I'm not meaning to sound rude because it's a matter of luck over who can do what in life. But if you don't want to do acting and getting acting work, which is half of what's involved, if you don't want to do acting and getting acting work full time, and I know this is very narrow minded of me, but if you don't want to do it full time, I'm not really interested. Sorry. Except I'm not sorry.